Hey guys, welcome back. I am Nitin Arora. As you all know, I am an Indian trained physiotherapist currently pursuing my PhD in sports and exercise sciences from Germany. Along with that, I am a research associate in cervical in space project where we deal with astronauts to see what changes happen in their cervical spine when they go to space and come back from there. Today, in this video, we will be talking about knee joint x-rays. Well, that is an important topic for physical therapists because whenever a patient comes to you with their knee joint x-ray or any other x-ray, the most important problem that physiotherapists have is how to interpret that x-ray. Because in any x-ray or every x-ray, you have some things or the other that you need to know before you can comment on that x-ray. So for commenting on an x-ray, for telling the person what the x-ray tells, you need to know how to interpret the x-ray. And for that, you should yourself know the normal anatomy that you need to see in that x-ray. Once you know the normal things that you have to see in that x-ray, you can see what is abnormal. So for that, in this video, we will be talking about what normal findings, what normal bones, what normal soft tissues or other things you can see in a knee joint x-ray. So let us start with that. So I'll show you some x-rays and tell you how to interpret those. So here it is. So for today, the first x-ray that we are going to talk about is this knee joint x-ray, which you can see here. It's an AP view of the knee joint that is anteroposterior view. So whenever you're going to get an x-ray, it will either be an AP view that is anteroposterior or lateral view from the side Anteroposterior means from the front to back or back to front. Lateral view means from the side. Skyline view from the top. So there are multiple views which you can get which we'll, we'll be discussing in the next part of this video. So now, just let me move myself a bit up so that I am on the side. Okay, let me take a marker. So now in this AP view, what you can see is this femur bone on the top. Three bones are clearly visible here. One is femur. This complete bone that you see here is the lower part of femur, the distal part of femur. This bone here that you see is the tibia, the proximal part of tibia, complete proximal part. And this is what we call the fibula. That is the lateral bone of the knee joint. Now the knee joint is composed of femur, tibia and fibula. Along with that, there's one more thing that you need to see in the knee joint. That is what we call the patella femoral joint. That is the patella and femur. So where is the patella? Here you see is the sesamoid bone patella that is lying in the quadriceps muscle. Okay. So now you have four bones that are clearly visible on the knee joint x-ray that is femur, tibia, fibula and patella. Now there are some important markings on these bones which you need to take care of when assessing or interpreting a knee joint x-ray. So I'll delete this part and then I'll show you the next parts of this x-ray. So now over here, now you know this is femur. The distal part of femur has the epicondyles, the femoral epicondyles, the lateral femoral epicondyle and the medial femoral epicondyle. And finally, the distal most part is the lateral femoral condyle and the medial femoral condyle. Over here, this part, this concave surface on the tibia is what you call the tibial plateaus. So this one is the medial tibial plateau. And this one is the lateral tibial plateau. Okay. So these concave surfaces are, are the plateaus. This medial section, the intermediary part between the two plateaus is what we call the intercondylar eminence. Okay. Now here, the fibula that you see here, this is the head of fibula. This part is the neck of fibula. Now, what you need to see? You need to see if they, these things are 
finely distributed on the x-ray or if you see some sort of problem here what sort of problem can you see you might see a fracture you might see a thin line that is for example here you might see a thin line here or a thin line here that indicates a fracture so you need now if you know what normal things look like you can easily interpret what is not normal and that is where your interpretation comes into action now the next thing that you need to comment in this x-ray are these gray areas this gray area on this side this gray area on this side and likewise here as well so these are the soft tissues that are the muscles around the knee joint above here is the quadriceps muscle below is the muscles of the lower leg now along with this this gray area between the femur and tibia on the lateral side and on the medial side is the space for the articular cartilage and the meniscus so this is the place where the meniscus sits okay so the lateral meniscus on this side and the medial meniscus on this side and this black area on both the sides is air because it does not absorb any x-ray x-rays you know now how do you interpret that which side of x-ray is it i mean i said that this is a lateral meniscus lm okay but how did i know that this is a lateral meniscus because fibula is present on the lateral side of the knee so the parts on this side will be the lateral epicondyle lateral condyle lateral meniscus and lateral tibial plateau okay clear perfect now let's move to the next view that is the lateral view of the knee joint so when you have a lateral view of the knee joint here you can again see the same bones here is the femur here is the tibia and here is the fibula and last but not the least here is the patella so now on this lateral spine x-ray you can see all the four bones that are present that is fibula femur patella and tibia what next do you need to interpret here here is something called the tuberosity of tibia so tibial tuberosity okay then over here is the condyle well remarkable condyles of femur over here you can easily remark the tibial plateaus and the head and neck of fibula as well so if you see any sort of irregularity or any sort of break in the continuity of these bones anywhere on this x ray you can easily say that there is a problem in the x ray and you, you can easily comment that whether it is a fracture whether it is a problem in terms of a tumor or any sort of articular cartilage degeneration for example if you see some sort of bony projections on this side or on this side or here or maybe at the lower or upper end of patella so you can say that there are osteophytes that are being formed on this part of the knee joint that are leading to that might be leading to the pain of the patient that the person is currently suffering from so it is not always necessary that the person will have pain because of these osteophytes but this might be the case so this is what you need to see in a lateral view of the knee joint along with that you can also remark you can also talk about the muscle thickness that whether the muscles are quite thick here or those are very thin atrophy so you can see the soft tissues around the knee joint so sometimes what happens is that along with these four bones that is femur tibia fibula and patella you might see one additional bone which some people say oh it's a fracture here some people might think that there is a fracture over here a chip of bone went out but that's not the case so here what you see is what we call the fabella so it's another sesamoid bone like patella but on the posterior aspect of the knee so that is what we call the fabella so it's not a fracture if you see something like that in your patient's x-ray that means it's a normal finding as long as it's not something irregular it's a properly shaped bone right so now 
fabulize something that is present in 30 to 50 percent of the population around the globe and mostly present in Asian population. So that's quite common in Asian people. So what next? Now you know the AP view, the lateral view, and the fabella that might be present on the lateral view. Next is this type of X-ray that might be there in front of you. Now, this type of X-ray looks as if everything is fractured. One fracture here, one fracture here. Oh my God, but that's not the case. Well, it is an X-ray of a six months old baby, an infant. And when you have an X-ray of a six months old infant, you already know that the bones are still ossifying. So there are ossification centers around the femur, around the tibia that are still growing. So you have the growth plates here. So this is also part of femur. This is still the part of tibia, but there's a growth plate that is being in between the edges. So between the epiphysis and the diaphysis and the metaphysis, you have the growth plate here. And over here for the tibia, this is the second growth plate. So these are still ossifying. And uh, likewise for the lateral aspect that is on the fibula, you still see that the head is still being formed properly. These are still growing. This small bone, not very dense per se. Why not so dense? Because it still has not, the infant has still not started walking and the bone is not getting enough load so it's still not so dense now if you see some irregularity on this ap or lateral view apart from this normal growth plate that you see here then that might be a problem so there might be osteosarcoma or some of some type of bone tumor or some type of fracture that's quite unusual or rare there might be a green stick fracture so that might be present that you need to see in this x-ray Okay, and this R that is written here indicates that this is an X-ray of the right knee. Okay, along with that, now this X-ray, again, you can see this, these lines, and you might think that it is a fracture, but again, it is not. It is still a knee joint X-ray AP view of a 12 months old child. The ossification centers are still open. The bone is more dense as compared to the previous picture. If you compare it with this one, this is more dense. And this indicates that the child has started walking and the bones are getting stronger because of the load that is falling on it. So now the bones are more stronger. The bones are more dense, but still it has not grown to the point that the ossification centers have not fused. So the ossification centers usually fuse at the age of 14 to 16 years in girls and at the age of 16 to 18 years in boys. That is why people usually tell their children not, I mean, not people, everyone tells them to not induce any overexertion over the major bones of the body because if these growth plates are injured, that might lead to hampering of the growth of that bone and might lead to consequences in the near future. That growth will not happen and the bone will not lengthen up. That is what is needed. And now here again, you can see the patella and again the epicondyle and the condyles, right? The tibial plateaus are well-formed, intercondylar eminence is present and the tibial plateau again is well-formed. The neck of patella is still fusing with the head of patella. There is still the growth plate that's being formed around the fibula. So this is what you see when the child grows, right? It's still not a fracture. It's just that the child is growing and the growth plate is ossifying. So it will take some time to ossify completely. Now, if you see the same thing on the lateral view, Again, the same child's X-ray on a lateral view, it's still not a fracture. I mean, you can say that, okay, this is a fracture. This is again a fracture. This is not a fracture. You need to know that the ossification centers are open and you need to interpret it, it in that way. So always ask the age of the child or the person who's coming to you. So if this would have been an X-ray of a 50 years old, I would have said that, oh, it's a fracture or it's a fracture or maybe it's also a fracture 
but when you know that this is an x ray of a child who is just 8 or 10 or 12 years old that means the ossification centers are still fusing and you can't say that this is a fracture right there might sometimes be an injury to the growth plate as well but that is not so usual so that is what you need to keep in mind and uh, how do you know that what is the age of the person either ask the child's parents or the person who's coming to you or else you can see the lower most part of the x-ray there will always be the person's name age gender and the side which was examined whether it is a right knee or left knee right and the date of examination and the time of examination will be written on that lower most part of the x-ray and last but not the least the name of the center which conducted the examination will be written so that you know who did it when it was done and whose x-ray is it because sometimes people come to you let's say three friends are going on a motorbike and they met an accident now two of them got knee injury fractures and one of them got distal femur fracture one of them got proximal tibia fracture now you have two x-rays in front of you and you did not ask them and you were just interpreting x-rays and telling the wrong person the right thing so always ask them whose x-ray is it or ask their name and age and then you know better what you need to interpret now last but not the least is here you can see the skyline view of the knee joint this is one of the type of uh, x-ray that you have if you do not see anything in the ap view or the lateral view so if ap view and lateral view does not show you any sort of problems in the knee joint you order an a skyline view of the knee joint skyline means a place from where the sky and the horizon is visible so you see that it's from the top of patella or the lower side of patella that you can see the top of patella easily and clearly so over here you can easily comment these parts so these parts are not visible in any x-ray neither in ap view nor in lateral view but on this skyline view you can see the posterior part of patella and the entire part of the femoral condyles so over here you can see that okay this is the lateral femoral condyle and this is the medial femoral condyle and epicondyles as well now here is the complete patella in the skyline view so this is the medial facet and this is the lateral facet now if you see any sort of osteophytes here if you see any sort of irregularities if you see any sort of break in the continuity of the bone you can comment that it's an, a fracture okay now how did i say that this part is the lateral part and the other part is the medial part how did i comment on that thing so when you see a skyline view and you have the patella in front of you you should know that the medial patella patellar facet is convex and the lateral patellar facet is a bit longer it's also convex but long do so you see it's circular and it's sort of oval okay so the one that is longer on one side elongated that is the lateral part so this is the lateral facet of patella this is the medial facet of patella and this is the lateral femoral condyles and epicondyles these are the medial femoral condyles and epicondyles so this is how you assess a knee joint x-ray be it anterior posterior view lateral view or skyline view you just need to see what is normal and when you see multiple normal x-rays you can you have an understanding at the back of your head that this is what normal looks like this is the medial side this is the lateral side this is femur this is patella this is tibia this is fibula and now that is how you are going to interpret normal x-rays so i hope you like the content that has been shared with you today if you like it i will share more such content in the near future as well on hip joint x-ray examination cervical spine x-ray examination lumbar spine and all other joints as well along with that i will be sharing content on space physiotherapy if you want to have that if you like our content just feel free to write us in the comment section and uh, if you like it a bit more you can share it with your friends as well because that will be really nice for us as well we get motivated when we see that people 
you know, actually like the content and we get motivated to make more content. So if you have any queries in terms of this video or any other video or any physiotherapy topic per se, feel free to write us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, or our comments on YouTube. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, feel free to subscribe because very nicely crafted, beautifully and deliciously crafted content is on the way. So we'll be waiting for your subscription and we'll see you soon in the next video. Have a nice day ahead and stay tuned, stay connected, stay blessed, all the very best.